Today is Monday, April 29th. And I'm just wondering if today we might grade that cowboy draft. And now a word from our title sponsor. Are all financial advisors fiduciaries? Fewer than you think, not knowing could reduce your lifestyle. Hi, I'm Mitch Kramer, founder and CEO of Fluent Financial. A fiduciary is a regulatory term to reduce conflicts of interest in wealth management. A fiduciary always works in your best interest. A non-fiduciary advisor might put their compensation or company ahead of yours. At Fluent Financial, we are certified financial planners acting as fiduciary advisors. To learn more, go to FluentFinancial.com or Fluent Financial's YouTube channel. There's been a significant development in your laundry room. Laundry detergent sheets, not dryer sheets, but the same concept. Paper thin, remarkably efficient. Just toss one into your load of clothes and voila! Sparkling clean and smelling great. And as a plus, they're hypoallergenic for those with sensitive skin. Plastic no- jugs of detergent. Jugs that just wind up in trash heaps. It's easy to get your laundry detergent sheets. Just go to the link in today's podcast episode. Introducing Star Power Smart Home Solutions, where cutting-edge technology meets effortless living. Control your entire home with just a tap on your smartphone. Adjust the lights, set the perfect temperature, and ensure your home is secure, all from the palm of your hand. Star Power has the experts that will transform your house into a secure smart home. Experience the ultimate solution in comfort and security for your family. Get started at GetStarPower.com. Star Power, where innovation meets home. For me, this was my 39th complete National Football League draft, 39th consecutive. This year, I got to work the last couple of days from the star in Frisco, the Cowboy headquarters. And I want to thank the Cowboys. They gave us a wonderful accommodation working out of the Tom Landry room, where for the last six rounds of the draft, I was with the Tickets Cowboy Insider and the Dallas Morning News Cowboy Beatman David Moore and my three long, long, long time draft assistants, Jed Williams, Jeff Bowers, and Dean Xeris. And while at the Star, I bumped into Jerry Jones. You know, no matter how critical you are of Jenny Jerry Jones, no matter how much you say you ought to do this or you ought to do that or he's wrong about doing this or, gee, what's happened to him here? Jerry's always friendly. He's always accommodating. He's always got a smile on his face. And to be honest with you, it was really good to see him again. And thank you to so many of you. You all sent loads of messages on X about me being back on the draft and commenting on my work on the draft and and know how much those are heartwarming to me. They're wonderful. It was wonderful to be back on the draft again. Thank you for your comments and thank the ticket for asking me to come back and do another complete draft. Now, on to the draft. Every team has expectations. Some finish the work of their draft, and their fans are really happy. Like this year, the fans of Kansas City and Baltimore, especially Pittsburgh, should be happy. And the NFC, Detroit and Green Bay and, uh uh-oh, for the Cowboys, all members of the NFC East, the Giants, Washington, and Philadelphia. Dallas fans, like me, I think came away from that draft cold. I know I did, because I wish the Cowboys had been more aggressive. But it started with aggressiveness. In the first round, they had the 24th pick, and they passed on what I think is regarded as a sure thing, center guard Graham Barton out of Duke and dropped down to number 29. But for doing so, they added a terrific pick fairly early in the third round, about a 29. They took OU tackle 
Tyler Guyton. Now, Guyton was projected to go in this area. It isn't considered such a major reach. But my problem with Guyton is he only has 14 starts in his college career and only one at left tackle, which is where the Cowboys project him replacing Tyron Smith. Now, he is very athletic, but I'm worried by some of the comments I saw in draft analyst statements about him. Comments like, he can be good as he wants to be. Needs better anticipation. Some question focus and commitment. Uh-oh. If you're playing left tackle in the National Football League, you got to want to be, you got to focus and commit because that's a critical position. Now, consider him just a bit of a developmental player. They passed on Jackson Powers Johnson, the center. He would have been a step-in, immediate, day one starter. No question about it. But see, he's a center. And teams value tackles more. And that's simply life in the NFL. <clears throat> in the second round, at pick 56, they took a defensive end named Marshawn Nealon from Northern Michigan. I'm okay with this. Yes, he's a developmental player, a backup player, but the Cowboys desperately need depth in, in the line and in the defensive line. And the grades on him suggest he should have been taken here or a bit earlier. So this is an okay pick and helps fill a need for the Cowboys. Now in that third rounder they acquired, I thought this was another pretty good pick. It's Kansas State guard Connor Beebe. Now he won't be a guard in Dallas. Cowboys are going to move him to center. He's never played center before. That, that's okay. He's a mauler. He's a good player. This is a solid pick. Things are going pretty well at this point, even though Guyton's a bit of a projection. Then we come to pick number 87. They take Notre Dame linebacker Maris the Ufa. I'm going to guess this player might be available 30 picks later in the draft. But the problem for the Cowboys is they didn't have a pick 30 picks later in the draft. They had this enormous gulf between the end of the third round and their pick at the very end of the fifth round. Now, this player, Liafu, He's going to be a backup linebacker next year and a special teams player. He's apparently very good at that. And he's versatile, but he's poor in pass coverage. And I think he'll be trained to be the replacement for middle linebacker Eric Kendricks. But at 87, they passed on a running back. I hate to word, use the word desperate at running back. But the Cowboys are desperate at running back. They had no number four pick. That was the pick they gave San Francisco for Trey Lance. And right now, that looks like a very poor deal because the Cowboys could have used that number four pick. Fourth round started, and there were loads of running backs left, loads of them. Loads of running backs the Cowboys liked. And the fourth round started, and it progressed, and it progressed, and no running backs taken. That, that wealth of running backs was still there. The Cowboys would not be aggressive. At pick 20 of the fourth round, the run on running backs started with the selection of Tennessee's Jalen Wright. Pretty good player. Would have been the number one runner for the Cowboys next year. <clears throat> and then it was an avalanche. Quickly off the board, 
Bucky Irving from Oregon, and Braylon Allen from Wisconsin. The Cowboys brought both those players in as part of their 30 national visits they were allowed. And then Kentucky's Ray Davis and Louisville's Isaac Garendo. The Cowboys liked each of those players. That was the intel from the Cowboys. And then Will Shipley from Clemson went. Six runners in 15 picks went off the board. What were the Cowboys doing? Nothing. And that's my biggest complaint here. The Cowboys were doing nothing. Look at what everybody else in this league was doing. Philadelphia made nine trades in this draft. In addition to getting players they wanted, they added third, fourth, and fifth rounders next year. Detroit, Green Bay, jumped around grabbing players they wanted. Minnesota was super aggressive, moved up twice in the first round to get two players they think will be critical to their future. Dallas, after that pick of the Notre Dame linebacker, and all the way to their late fifth selection, they were silent. 86 players went off the board in that gap. Dallas has all of its picks next year, and I think they're going to get four compensatory picks. So next year, I think Dallas right now is looking at having 11 picks. Why not? Use one of those picks from next year to deal into this year. Use a, a, a number six this year and the next year's four to get into the fourth round. Something like that. If you say, well, the Cowboys really they don't, they don't like to do stuff like that. They did it last year. They gave up a this year's fifth for last year's sixth so they could draft Eric Scott, the the cornerback. Why wasn't there some aggression to get a running back? And then in the fifth round, they, by the way, by the time their fifth round pick came, besides that run in the fourth round, five more running backs went off the board before they picked the fifth round, including Purdue's Trace, uh, Tyrone Tracy and Marshall's Rasheen Ali, and each of those players Dallas had brought to the star for visits as part of their national visits list. Between the Cowboys' third-round pick and their fifth-round pick, of those 86 selections, 11 were running backs. None of them will play here. They did take a pretty good corner, a kid named Kalen Carson out of Wake Forest. Afterwards, they told us that at number 87, they had strongly considered taking Kalen Carson. Wait a minute. You thought this kid was a third-round possible value, and you waited 86 picks hoping he'd fall down to you? At number 174, get off your butt. Get off your butt. Be aggressive. The last three picks of the draft will be backups here. All in all, from the eight picks, Dallas got two starters, both of those offensive linemen who will be position converts, and six players will be backups next year. No running back help. This is not the solution Cowboy fans were hoping for this draft. Zeke Elliott, apparently, is going to be signed by the Cowboys to be their running back. That is not a solution for the running back problem here. If this is all in, as Jerry Jones said, the lack of aggression here by the Cowboys may have some discouraged fans saying they're all out. Today's episode brought to you by Fluent Financial, Retire Sooner, Better Lifestyle, and by Star Power, 
Love where you live. Just Wondering is a production of DSP Media for FanStream Sports. You can find Norm's show along with other great programming at FanStreamSports.com. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, hit follow. And every weekday, a fresh new episode of Just Wondering will be delivered right to you. And if you enjoy this podcast, please share it with a friend. Finally, should you have questions or comments, please share them with us by going to X and our address at Norm's Clubhouse. That's Just Wondering with Norm Hitzkus. And every day, I'll be just wondering about something. And I'm Mary Hitchkiss, and I'm just wondering too.